or hi to us handbag with 60 books in isolation and it is Sarah Morgan one summer in Paris sometimes an ending is just a beginning a Sunday Times best-selling author okay so Sarah Morgan now uh, okay I read this book for a while and now I finally read it and this is okay let me read the blurb here we go Grace can't believe it when a husband of 25 years announces he wants doesn't want to join her on the anniversary trip to Paris instead he wants a divorce Reading from this shock, Grace makes a bold decision to go on this holiday of a lifetime alone. Audrey well, leaves behind a heartache of her own when she arrives in Paris. A job in a bookshop is a ticket to freedom, but with no knowledge of French language, a summer venture seems doomed to fail. It seems until she meets Grace and everything changes. Living in neighbouring apartments above the bookshop, Grace and Audrey form an unlikely friendship. They came to Paris to find themselves, but finding each other might be the best thing that's ever happened to them. Can I say right now, okay, that I really, really enjoyed this book. It was just so well written. It, it actually struck me. Sarah Morgan has a way of kind of making you really, really feel for these characters. And the way she describes Paris, now I'll say up into Paris, okay, this is the romantic Paris. This is the gay Paris Paris. This is the sophisticated Paris where everything's beautiful, okay. And the Paris is definitely a beautiful country, but this is the romantic ideal of Paris. This is like Paris syndrome Paris, okay. I'm going to put that in the links, what that is. So, but the thing is with Grace, she's an organiser. She organises the whole world around her to the point where she's organised every aspect of her life, her husband's life. She even... Like buys Christmas presents and best friends to other people for David to give to people and he basically hooks up who with who the child of babysitter and kind of leaves her and so she goes on this void of self-discovery okay right this bit here all right all right this is just their, their own personalities because they live in a very very small town in Connecticut unlike other journalists whose sites may be set on bigger targets David never showed a desire to work anywhere but this small town that they're both born in love with. The way he saw it, he was a force of the community. He was obsessed with the news. He also believed that it was what happened right here in the hometown that mattered to people. He often joked that all he needed to fill the entire newspaper was to spend an afternoon in at the backyard barbecue listening to the gossip. He was friends with the police chief and the fire chief, which ensured that he was given all the major scoops. Right. However, over dinner, over dinner, okay, he announces that the dream vacation to Paris is over. He's leaving her. And she, she describes with the advice of her um, grandmother Mimi to go it alone. Okay. And then later on you meet Audrey. Okay. Audrey who's British. Who is with her mum and her stepfather. Her mum's an alcoholic. Okay. And her entire, and Audrey's been saving for like, you know, to get away. Okay. And then her mum hiding the money in a teddy bear. And mum decides to clean her room and throws it at the teddy bear, leave it Audrey with no money, but Audrey just goes anyway. However, Audrey goes to France, obviously, or obviously to Paris, where she's dyslexic, she's working in a bookshop, she can't speak the language, so she very, very struggles, and then these two women connect. There you go. Right. This bit here, because Audrey's story with an alcoholic mother felt very, very realistic. Okay? Audrey pours a heart pounding. You drink a lot, mum, too much. And the biggest dread was that Ron, her stepfather, would get tired of it. Maybe she should talk to the doctor, or why would I talk to a doctor? Because you have a problem. What's wrong with the problem? But I can't reason with you when you're in this mood. Mother flounced out of the room, slamming the door. Always stared at the door, feeling sick. This was why she really brought this up the subject. How can mother think she can have a problem? Someone in this house, house was crazy. And always starting to think it must be her. Right, so obviously, else, and this is actually quite true with a lot of. Um, children of alcoholics is their own relationship to alcohol a lot of my people I know who have alcoholic parents are total absolutely totalers they abstain a few of my friends are like that and so just for that reason alone because they've seen the dark effects of alcohol and they refuse to let it even even touch even go near it okay so So, they meet in Paris, and how they meet, okay, is kind of like, a, basically, Audrey, who, Audrey chases after a guy who snatched Grace's bag, and that's how they become friends. It's a bit of like, you know, a travel meet cute. And they become friends, and it's nice seeing the generational difference, but the f friendship going on, because basically, Audrey needs to be mothered. 
no one's really mothered her. Her mother does not mother her. Her mother's an alcoholic. And all these given with Sophie, the kind of relationship she's always wanted with a mother. Okay? And that happens. She mothers her, but she respects her boundaries. And have a very, very good friendship. But it's, it's mothering, in a way. There you go. This is the bit here, okay, is when... Because one thing I did notice is that Sophie... Sorry. Sophie, um, Grace's daughter, this is her reaction to find out about the affair. Grace's reaction had been worse, far worse than Grace had anticipated. Though David had told her the news, Grace had insisted on being there because she hadn't trusted David to handle Sophie's emotions in a sensitive way. In the end, he stumbled his way through it as clumsy as drunk, knocking as a drunk knocking over chairs in a bar. He mumbled something about how people change over time and started to say that he and Grace had grown apart, but that he'd seen something in Grace's expression and confessed that it had been his decision and his alone. For days afterwards, her daughter had raged around the house with a tear between anger and tears. It was disgusting, Grace. She would have to leave school. Everyone would be talking about it. She never wanted to see her dad again. Everyone would... Basically, Sophie is quite selfish, really, and she's thinking not only herself, okay? So... And, but, at the same time, when she calms herself down, she basically says, well, why don't you go to Paris by yourself, mum, just do it. So, even though she is selfish, she's also not. It's actually a good kind of contrast. No character in this book follows a typical path, if you will. They're interested and they're flawed and they have, tam and they have temper tantrums and they calm down and apologise. These are very, very real characters and I absolutely love this book for it. Absolutely love this book for it, okay? So, this is an example, okay, of when they get to Paris, of Sophie Mothering, okay? So, Sophie Mothering, Grace Mothering, Grace Mothering. You, um, this is when, after, they meet the meet you, if they will, and already explain her situation. You work in the bookshop, mornings. My payment is an apartment for the summer, enough money to buy one croissant a day. Unless I can find another job, I'm going to lose weight. She pushed outside the door, and Grace realised this was the bookshop she'd been looking for when she'd been assaulted. I was coming here, she gazed up at the window, enchanted. My grandmother is French, she used to visit this place when she lived in Paris. She didn't understand it. Why would Mimi have been interested in a bookshop? That's some storyline going on. Okay, so, so that's how. So essentially, uh, Grace volunteers at the bookshop, helps Audrey out with her French, and also with Audrey being dyslexic, Grace helps her out with that. In return, Grace, so Audrey gives Grace a haircut, Makes her basically buy new clothes and just kind of fresh herself up and basically leave it a bit more. Makes her go chic and modern, okay, and just kind of explore it a bit more. So these two women, their relationship, they kind of do support and assist each other. And it's really, really nice. And the thing is, and I just found interest in myself as a solo traveller because I, this happened to me. Now, I solo travelled my first time, Mark 25. As I went to Japan, um, then it took a few years due to financial reasons. Then I went to Italy. Um, I've been to Japan, Italy, um, Germany, three times. Two, twice to Berlin, once to Munich. I've been to Prague, um, Poland twice, Warsaw and Krakow, Lithuania. Um, so yeah, I love to travel. I do. I was actually I love this. I was intended to go back to Prague because I really really loved Prague, and I went in February, which was the coldest time of the year. And I really, really liked it. And then, obviously, I was planning to go back now, okay? And then, obviously, we can't. But as soon as it clears, I'm heading back to Prague because I loved Prague. I got a little Prague card and just travelled around on that. And it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. This bit here struck me as a solo traveller. This bit here. Before this holiday, when not she last eaten alone? The answer was never. There's always someone with her. David, Sophie, Mimi, Monica, her friend. Her life was filled with a small circle of people she loved and trusted. And that wasn't an accident. She'd chosen a life that was safe. Anything in life was planned and scheduled from her teaching to her socialising. She found a week's worth of meals and laid her clothes out the night before. Kels wasn't allowed to peep through the crack in the door. So this is Sophie basically loosening up. She realised that in her marriage she was too rigid. Obviously, the affair was not her fault. Of course not. But she realised that in herself she was too rich. She never really, all, she was too organised to have fun. Even her fun was scheduled. So this is her basically kind of loosening up and becoming a bit more true to herself. Like the shackles of what society expected of her, if you will, being the wife and the mother of someone who's quite held in high esteem in the community. Yeah, and I just love that. As a solo traveller myself, I've had that issue, okay, of 
the whole solid rat eaten alone kind of thing and i've had stairs like you won't believe okay i've had total total stairs i'm in a restaurant enjoying a gorgeous meal and people are looking at me like you won't believe that you know the solo traveler my way of getting around that is i read a book okay i read a book so yeah <laughs> so that's how we do it <laughs> So, you know, set us on in the veranda, do a nice, a nice glass of wine, reading the book. Lovely. Right. So, and this bit here, okay, um, is when Audrey meets a guy called Etienne, okay? And the thing is about Audrey is that she's very, very repressed. She doesn't really feel like she could talk to people about her issues with her mother. And this is a bit where she meets Etienne, who's obviously, he's like the Parisian dream. He's a Parisian dream. Yeah, he's a Parisian dream. Because in Paris is a city of romance, after all. And this bit here just kind of struck a chord, okay? There you go. This is when she kind of breaks down, because questions about your parents. And she just, she gets to that point emotionally where she just spills. Here we go. Did I wish knew it was over? If there was one thing I hated more than the girl spilling her guts, it was the guy sobbing all over him. He was going to want a relationship with someone as complicated as her. It was somewhere in Paris. But maybe some way, something light and fun, and she just deluded him with the whole life story. It was like spilling in the trash. She'd given him a few of the low life, but now she drenched him in solid detail. Yeah, and the thing is, from that point, it's page 308, you see Sophie, kind of Sophie, you see Audrey, Audrey, kind of really kind of evolving more as a character, becoming more confident in herself. Don't think of her basically, um, you know, addiction to drink is in a way a form of child abuse isn't it because and sophie has basically been abused in a, in a way by her neglectful mother who didn't mean to be neglectful but she cared more about the drink than her and that bit really kind of touched a chord and so say audrey's character audrey audrey's character kind of shifts at this point you know it's okay to talk about it you're not alone on this she spent so many years bottling her fears now, after that moment, I think she felt she became so much stronger. At the same time, while Audrey is finding Etienne, gracefully connects with Philippe. Now, Philippe, because it's Paris, back then, he was the one that got away. He was the one who basically went off to become a fantastic, fantastic um, classical composer? Conductor. A classical conductor, and he's worked all around the world, and he's absolutely loved, and, you know, he's like, he's very, very famous. Okay, and gracefully connects with him, and it's interesting because it's kind of shows the romance, but the consequences of what he the romance can do. They go out, they wine, they dine. Yes, they do have sex, and then David shows up, and it's interesting the choice that Grace has to make, and this bit here. And uh, this bit here, though, this is when David shows up. And this bit here, I love this bit because it shows a shift in Grace's temperament. I love this bit here. How about lunch tomorrow? It sounded so calm and reasonable, so too like the old David. That for a moment she was tempted. Just a conversation. One hear what he had to say. Even as the thought entered her head, she couldn't imagine all this jaw dropping. She, he said, "Yes. What are you doing about something?" No, she wasn't a doormat. She was so mad at herself for even considering saying yes that her anger level was trebled and she held a whole burning cup of emotion that had built up inside her in his direction. I don't want to eat lunch with you, David. I don't want to get back together. This wasn't some adolescent row. You ended our relationship on our 25th wedding anniversary and you did it in public. You left me. You left. You left Sophie, our daughter. I love that. That would have been Grace at the start of the book. Grace is gone. This is New Grace. I like New Grace. Okay? I like, like New Grace. And the thing is with Philippe is that it's a flash in the pan romance. There are different parts in life. But even deep down, even though Sophie, sorry, even though Grace, Grace, okay, is embracing this new life. And at her core, she still wants the same, what she, what she had before. She can't just shake that off. And I thought that was quite realistic. And the choice she makes, you may not like it as a viewer or a reader, but, as, but at the same time, it felt very, very realistic. So I liked it. I really, really liked it. So, One Summer in Paris by Sarah Morgan. I do recommend it. It's a nice, fun read with fun, relatable characters with the romantic Paris, if you will. Okay? So, and I'm signing off here. Love to everyone. And...
Bye now.